Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. So, because I know that this show is going to piss me off. I know it's going to piss me off. I'm not going into this expecting anything, right? I know Brian Dale and Sam Nocata is going to piss me off. I know Ricochet and Will, and Will Ospreay is going to piss me off. So, before we go into the show, and I'm going to warn you, off rip, it's going to be a negative review. I, I, right now, it's currently 4.52 in the afternoon. I'm a few hours away from Dynamite. I'm just going to let you know, off right, outright, it's going to be a negative review. If you want to go directly into the timestamps, go for it. But I want to be charitable. You, you guys know me whenever you listen to the channel. If I'm going to completely destroy something, the least I can do is be charitable towards it. I got to highlight at least one positive thing about the company at the very least or any wrestler before I bury them. So let's talk about the contract deal that AEW has now. So we talked about it about two weeks ago where I fucked up the story originally. Going off of this right here, Variety says, All Elite Wrestling has officially signed a new multi-year multimedia rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery. Financial terms of the deal weren't disclosed, but sources say the deal is valued at upwards of $150 million per year. So let's just say $150 million to $170 million, like they originally stated. Uh, according to someone in the comment section, we kind of broke this down for people who didn't want to read the article. He said... Um, all Elite Wrestling has officially signed blah, blah, blah. This agreement includes, and I quote, a streaming on Max starting in January of 2025. AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision will be simulcast on Max, allowing U.S. subscribers to watch these shows live and on demand. Linear Networks, AEW shows will continue to be broadcast on TNT and TBS, maintaining their traditional TV presence. Enhanced distribution, the deal encompasses enhanced distribution rights across social media platforms, potentially paving the way for more digital content and broader audience reach. Pay-per-view events, live AEW pay-per-view events will be available on Max later in 2025, likely at a discounted rate with exclusive marketing and promotional efforts centered around Max. Future programming, there's an indication of potential new AEW programming on both linear and digital platforms, suggesting growth and content offerings. So that's good. Honestly, I, I can't, you, you can't, you can't take that deal and spin it into anything negative. That's a fucking hell of a deal, man. They did it. All props to them. I will be the first one to say, that I have to admit it. I was absolutely wrong when it came to the television deal. Outright. For months now, really years, I guess you could say technically, because I feel like I've been talking about this since at least 2022. I said that the television deal, if they kept up the programming that they're doing at the moment, that they were going to fuck up the back because it's just horrible television. And they proved me wrong. I guess whatever deal they have with Warner Brothers Discovery, I guess Warner Brothers Discovery is happy about it. Hey, in the end of the day, that's their pocketbook. That's their relationship. Do I do I uh, disagree with the television deal in regards to metrics? Strictly from an opinion base, not like, oh, I don't want AEW to be on television. No, not nonsense. No, I'm perfectly fine with AEW being on, you know, television. I don't want them going out of business. None of that bullshit. At the same time, though, from an opinionated standpoint, strictly talking business, I think it's a horrible deal think it's terrible when you look at metrics but that's just from the outside looking in obviously i can't tell you what you know warner brothers discovery has in regards to metrics i can't tell you how many advertisers maybe were plugged on aew that did bring in potential sales and those ads those people they decided to plug more stuff on their programming i don't know maybe there's there's a bunch of things that can go into this i mean I can highlight the numbers all day in regards to the metrics, and I am going to continue to highlight it because I still think that the number decreasing is a bad thing. I don't know how you can spend that. But at the same time, though, I mean, even with the numbers in the position that it's currently in right now, clearly those advertisers who are plugging their commercials in those slots in AEW are getting a heavy ROI. That's the only explanation that I can get as to why Warner Brothers Discovery will up the deal to such a degree. Clearly, those advertisers and those promotional slots, they're paying big money to be advertised on AEW. So I was wrong. Hey, it is what it is, man. Congratulations to them in the end of the day. Now, in regards to Warner Brothers Discovery, I look at this and I say to myself, even if whatever you feel they bring in in regards to ROI is still heavy right now, is it heavy enough 
to overcompensate or get over that hump that is the decreasing numbers within AEW's programming. Like, I would love to know metrically what is the bottom out as far as um, how low of numbers they can get before like it actually affects the advertisers in those slots right because what i'm thinking is it's not just the metrics in regards to say like dynamite but it's also having so much content you have dynamite you have collision you have rampage and between those shows maybe they look at it like that i didn't even think about that maybe they look at it like AEW programming, if you were to take all the shows and wrap it into one, they bring in about a million viewers every week, right? Between Rampage, between Dynamite, between Collision. Maybe maybe they look at it like, oh, okay, well, AEW as a whole averages one million views a week between the three shows. You know, maybe they just look at it like that. That's, that's the only explanation I got. I mean, again, I would love to see the numbers in regards to what bottoming out means, but... If they're happy, who can I who can I say? I can't sit here and say that, you know, they're wrong. I don't know. But congratulations to AEW. Like I said, credit where credit is due. With that being said, let's get into the review. All right. So we're to begin with this dog shit ass match. OK, so I knew I was going to be pissed off watching it. I didn't know I was going to be this pissed off watching it. There were so many bad things about this match. And, you know, there was a part of me that said there's no way and i was referring to the to the daniel bryan brian danielson main event match tonight with, Kaz with kazushka okada i will say it to myself nah because aew they don't do a lot of dq finishes right i just can't remember the last time i've ever seen that happening and i said to myself i wonder what kind of goofy shit they were going to get themselves out of in order not to do this match legitimately i talked about that like a week or two ago remember that i mentioned that that was going to be the case right before we get to the finish though so they essentially went out there and they spammed dlc moves that's what they did. That's what they did. It was like playing with a little kid online and the little kid bought some DLC moves and he put every last single fucking new DLC move on his CAW and then he took some new moves on top of that and put it on top of him. And literally every fucking DLC move you got was a cutter, some random roundhouse kick or spamming springboard moves. That's all the match was, folks. That's all the match was. Sit here and tell me with a straight fucking face. I'll ask this question once again like i did a couple of weeks ago during the all out review how do you sit here with a straight face and bitch complain moan and groan about john cena and his five moves to do you bitch complain groan and moan about the usos and the wrestlemania match you bitch complain moan and groan and say that when you watch the wwe wrestlers they're just big muscle head guys who like to do slams and grunts and that's all they have to their fucking name well you gotta at least admit that the complete opposite is what aew does and they spamming a hell of a lot more than what i see in wwe literally they did every fucking body's finisher in a variation style no i'm sorry let's take that back because that would actually say that they did multiple moves outside of a fucking cutter outside of a fucking rhinos kick and outside of a fucking springboard you think i am bullshitting you that's all they did that's it and here's my thing I came into this match and I said to myself, I had a feeling that it was going to be a dog shit, go out there, spam every fucking flipping move, fucking known to mankind, and that's going to pop the AEW audience because they don't know real wrestling. Real wrestling to them is going to your nearest circus and watching some people on a fucking act going out there and flipping on some fucking cords. That's all they know, stunt double bullshit that they want to sit here and proclaim as professional wrestling. You want to claim that to be professional wrestling? Then be my guest. But let me just tell you right now that we are not watching the same industry. I did not grow up in the industry that you grew up in today they what they did right there that was a performance art that was not professional wrestling that was performance art that was theater and i mean that in the worst way fucking possible it's like watching a rapper spam ad-libs and you think to yourself well golly g willikers he's really good at rap because i like the instrumental that goes along with the fucking ad-libs no lyricism no structure no theme no reason no story just go out there and spit ad-libs maybe force a rhyme or two give me some good instrumental beat and give me some feature from some fucking loser ass fucking rapper that existed about a decade ago but he has a lot of name prominence on him so hey maybe myself a couple 
couple of records for me, but in reality, me or myself in regards to my own talent, I fucking suck. And congratulations, AEW fanboys. Congratulations, Marks out there who don't know a goddamn single thing about professional wrestling. You got your stupid ass wish. Two guys went out there and they flipped the entire fucking time. But like I said, you won't call out that bullshit. You'll call out all the other bullshit and talk about how, well, these guys right here, they do the same thing over and over again in WWE. Keep it consistent. How about these motherfuckers right here? But you think that's my only part of the rate that we're going to discuss? Oh, no, 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 no. Let me run you through this real quick. So never mind the fact that they spent the entire fucking 20 minutes of their lame ass match spamming cutters, spamming flips, and spamming kicks, right? Never mind all that bullshit for a second. These motherfuckers have the audacity, right? To no sell two poison ranas. And then the third poison rana went into a hidden blade, which caused Will Ospreay to collapse out of the pain of taking a, taking a poison rana he knows so twice. He fell into a pinfall and the referee not making the pinfall because common sense would tell your knucklehead ass not to make it count because it shouldn't count because it makes no sense to count both the shoulders down. Why would you do that? That's retarded. You wait for the wrestlers to get back up again. Why would you do that? But lacking common sense here for a second because of course this happens in professional wrestling a lot and we're supposed to be delusional dipshits who have the intelligence of a fucking two chimpanzees fucking somewhere in some local zoo okay also known as the hood by the way you have these fucking losers actually fucking do a double count finish both their shoulders were down and he counted both their shoulders down mind you will osprey didn't take a finish his shoulders are down because he collapsed in a heap on top of Will on top of Ricochet after doing a hidden blade after no selling two poison runners. Oh, well, oh, but you think it's over? Oh no, no, no. It gets much better. Oh, so much better. They restart the match. Tony Khan, he spoke to his butt buddy over here, Tony Schiavone, right? And he said, hey, Tony, how about you go tell the loser over there who got fucking raped in the ass by JBL, got bullied by Benoit, tell that loser to restart the fucking match. You know, the match that shouldn't be restarted to begin with because you shouldn't have counted both for their shoulders now? Restart the fucking match for us. Uh, the match that, you know, we're pretty much doing that just to get a pop out of the crowd because what us actually fucking go out there and actually rely on our storytelling via the actual in-ring action that doesn't include having to pop the crowd with our stupid fucking flips no that actually takes fucking talent right talent within the sphere of actually wrestling but i digress though they restart the match and the match goes for not even fucking one minute one minute they're trading elbow shots folks indy 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 yay boo yay boo indy indy elbow shots Oh, look at that, a counter roundhouse kick. Oh, look at that, a counter roundhouse kick. More roundhouse kicks into a fucking hidden blade. Oh, but you think it's over? No, no sorry, Bob. It's not over. It's never over when you have stupidity. Whenever something good is happening, it feels like it goes a little bit too fast. But when shit that's terrible is happening, it feels like it's going on forever. I know you felt that way about your life. I know you feel about that way about your life currently right now. That's why you decide not to pick up the gun tonight. But let me give you a reason to pick up the gun. Oh my God, you have fucking Vegeta come out here, also known as Kanosuke Takeshita. He brings his stupid slant head ass out here. He brings his stupid slant eye ass out here. He brings his stupid slant head, slant eye, mean no speak English looking head ass out here. And he fucking causes a DQ finish. After a double pinfall, after spamming every goddamn cutter, every fucking round I was kicking, every dive, known to man fucking kind, this fucking guy comes out here and he causes a double DQ. A double DQ. They literally did everything to protect both guys, but protect them. He's a dumb fuck. Tony Khan's a dumb fuck. You, uh, uh, by the way, by the way, Ricochet, uh, uh, let's, uh, you, you better, you better soak in the sun right now, buddy. Suck it, soak in all that sunlight right now with the spotlight being on you currently at the moment. Because once, once, once Tony runs this match back, whether it's a triple threat match or whether he does some stupid, no, some stupid number one contender match that eventually leads to Will Ospreay at Wrestle Dream or some bullshit. Uh, 
understand that your 15 seconds of fame is gonna fucking be fleeting as quickly as it fucking came, buddy. You're gonna wear out your usefulness with this fucking Chia Pet guy over here once you get done with Will Osprey. You know that, right? So how about you do me a favor, okay? How about you go into catering? How about you pull up a chair? And how about you pull up a reserve sign and put that bitch in that chair? Because that's where you're going to be sitting at throughout the rest of your tenure and your AEW career once this whole shit is over with. You understand that, right? I wonder if he understands that. Does he understand that? I hope he understands that. You really took your contract and WWE ripped it up the shreds to come to AEW to do the exact same shit times 10 and WWE and AEW just to be used for this one specific match. Because that's the kind of person that you're signed under. You're signed under a person who thinks to himself that all you need to do to go at the, the puppet stupid ass audience is spam a bunch of fucking flips and spam a bunch of fucking kicks and spam a bunch of fucking cutters and do a double pinfall because that's what you want to see in your professional wrestling and then continue that with some stupid fucking guy coming outside the ring telling them ding, 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 ding. how about you fucking I just I want you I, but, and and and, this, and the funny part, the satisfying part about all this, when it's all said and done, you want to hear the satisfying? That's because it gets even better, right? It gets even better because after Ricochet wears out his usefulness for Tony Khan, after he sits in that reserved cut chair known as catering, after the dust has settled, you just be in a long line of ex WWE talent used for one purpose, whether that's ratings, whether that's viewership numbers, or whether that's having that one specific match, because that's the booker that you reside under. So congratulations, Ricochet. You just fucked yourself over. You just cucked yourself over. Hope it was worth it, you stupid bastard. With that being said, continuing on, what a stupid fucking match. <sighs> well, Heyman, Adam Page, and Juice Robinson are going at it right now. It's on commercial break, picture in picture. I figure we should cover at least some of the stuff beforehand while it's on commercial break. The Darby Allen promo is probably the highlight so far, and I guarantee you that's going to be probably the best thing that's happened tonight. That was a good promo. That was professional wrestling. I would like to see more of that happening throughout your show. That was good. Him sitting down in the parking lot around junk cars, realizing how much of a dumb fuck he was to put his number one contender shot on the line against John Moxley for no fucking reason, especially because Brian Danielson was there wrestling that night against Nigel McGuinness, meaning you could have wrestled Danielson that night. God, this company is so inconsistent with their fucking stories. Nevertheless, though, he talked about how he has an open challenge. He told some stupid fucking made up story about him having getting jumped on a bus or some shit. He, it was a metaphor essentially saying that, hey, I have to keep fighting even though the odds are against me because those guys fighting me and they had a knife and they tried to stab me. I said that I was going to fight them anyways because it was worth it and it made me feel good even though I knew I was going to get stabbed. It was the same way of how I felt about John Moxley. I knew I was going to get my ass kicked, but I had to do something because it would have felt good to do it. Fucking stupid. Again, you put your temp you put your championship title shot on the line. Okay, just whatever. It was a good promo nonetheless. The reasoning was fucking dumb, but the promo in itself was good. The aggression there, you can hear it in his voice. You can clearly tell that the approach that they're going to take in the next couple of months is building Darby Allin up. I did see a report a couple of weeks ago saying that they had plans to make him the AEW world champion it doesn't matter in the end of the day because the AEW world championship is about as fucking garbage as some paper belt that I made when I was 12 years old pretending that I was intercontinental champion as a matter of fact that belt means more because at the very least it was put on the line more often than not and in my fake promotion with my little brother we actually fucking main evented the belt consistently so I'm here therefore saying that my fake intercontinental championship belt back in 2001 has more prestige than your AEW World Championship. Nevertheless, though, we go back a little bit before this promo to the bad. Because, of course, Jericho, my also favorite wrestler of all time, Chris Jericho. Oh, where art thou is Chris Jericho? He had to cut a promo against Mark Briscoe. And give credit where credit is due. They try to give a little bit of momentum. They try to build up something to semblance to make this as personal as humanly possible by Jericho 
Briscoe invoking the name of Jay Briscoe, but it was nothing, and no one cares, because no one cares about Jericho, no one wants to see Jericho versus Mark Briscoe, and no one wants to see the ROH World Championship on one promotion being contested as the top priority for the fucking company, but on the other show, means about as much in 2000 as the European Championship did to WWE, that's a fucking fact, you know that's a fact, that World Championship, oh, but who am I kidding, it's AEW, they have this fucking problem, they have this fetish, they have this obsession with making their world champions look as garbage as humanly fucking possible, let me ask you guys a question, how many fucks do you give to see Mark Briscoe versus Chris Jericho for the ROH championship, let me answer that for you, zero, as a matter of fact, negative zero, that's how many fucks, not even a zero, negative zero, no such thing, zero, negative zero, you don't give a fuck, don't sit here telling me you give up because you don't give a fuck. Not even AEW fans give a fuck. They'll tell you that they give a fuck. They'll say, why are you crying? Why are you complaining? While well, crying and complaining about me crying and complaining. Here's a thought. How about you motherfuckers worry about what the fuck you like and you stop worrying about what the fuck I like? Right? Deal? Cool? Shake on it? No, don't touch my hand. I know where your hand's been and it hasn't been on a woman. Look, look, if you want to push this, how about you do it in a personal manner? How about you don't try to include a world championship inside a match just for the sake of saying that you have a championship on the line, knowing good and damn well that your championship belt is fucking meaningless. As a matter of fact, let me wipe my shit on it and use it as actual fucking tissue so I can give it something of fucking usefulness. And now we have this match with Hangman Adam Page and fucking Jay White, Jay Briscoe. What the fuck is this loser's name again? Macho Man Randy Savage, fucking doppelganger. Macho Man Randy Savage, if you got him off a of wish or Timu, fucking, I forgot his fucking name. Juice Robinson, I just remembered right now. Fuck this match. Fuck that guy. I don't give a shit about this. I don't give a fuck about Juice Robinson. And hell, it's Heyman Adam Page. I stopped giving a fuck about this garbage jobber since he fucking had that garbage match and fucking all out. And mind you, all that fucking momentum and where did it go, huh? Where did it go? Where is Heyman Adam Page right now, huh? Did he go after the World Championship even though he main evented the last pay-per-view and one of the most bloodiest feuds of all time, huh? Where did he go? Oh, that's right. Nowhere. Because it's AEW and Stagnant's in the fucking name. Sorry that I sound really aggressive right now. Sorry that I sound really irritated. Sorry that I sound a tad bit frustrated. But as you've noticed in the title, it's five years. Five years of this garbage bullshit type of booking. Five years of what you got in the opener. Five years of this character development that's not here. Five years in Creative Nader, but they're gonna sit here and try to gaslight you and tell you that five years of promise and five years of greatness. Congratulations of getting your fucking TV deal, because if you're trying to plan on killing me so I don't have to watch your reviews anymore, I don't have to watch your stupid ass show to review anymore, then congratulations. Because give it about five more months and I'm gonna skibbity myself before I fucking review another goddamn dinosaur. Of my show, fuck my life. Continuing on. Oh my god, I forgot we have Daniel San Okada. Oh my god, bro, it just hit nine o'clock. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, it's one of those episodes. Last week was actually a pretty decent episode, and we have this episode we have to get through. Oh my god, oh no, oh. The stupidity continues. The stupidity continues. It's one of those shows. Oh, fuck. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I did it to myself. I knew it. Devonta, you have no one to blame but yourself, bro. You said to yourself this is going to be the case. And guess what? It's fucking happening right fucking now. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. So, you have Jay White who battled against fucking Hangman Adam Page after him and Adam Page. He beat fucking, fucking Juice Robinson. He, he beat him. He beat him. Well, uh, fucking guess there. Fucking shocker, right? He beat him. He, 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 he put, a, he put a, a belt around his neck and he threw him over the ropes and he hung him like a noose, right? He probably thought he was black. That's why he did it. I guarantee you that's why he did it. He was envisioning fucking, uh, not even swerve. He was just envisioning the entire black race. I, I, I see right through you, hey man. I, I know who your people are. I, I, I see, I see you, bro. I see you. I get it. Racism. It's, it's base. You're base. You're base. I fucking hate you. I hate you. Uh, Jay White comes out. Apparently he returned. I didn't even know he was gone. Fuck return. I didn't even know he was gone. That just tells you how little I give a shit about this guy. He brawls with Hangman Adam Page. They go into a crowd and he spears him through a table. Now you may think to yourself, Devontae, wouldn't you like this? 
Han, then you just got finished talking about progression for Hangman Adam Page. Now he's in the feud with Jay White. I think that's the, I don't know, call me crazy. I think that's the definition of decreasing, right? Just because you have some hard on from Jay White because of some stupid fucking Japan matches he had over a decade ago, doesn't mean I have to sit here and pretend as if all that shit matters to me or matters in the grand scheme of things on fucking Dynamite, which, by the way, when was the last time he was relevant in AEW at all, period? Better yet, when was the last time he had a world championship match or was in the main event title? picture scene period oh wait that'd be about a fucking year ago when they forced him into that fucking position after holding the championship belt match that he's stolen because that's the closest he'll ever get to the fucking world championship right and let me ask you guys another fucking question right never mind the decreasing never mind bringing yourself down to someone else's fucking level let me ask you another fucking question where do you think this goes afterwards huh let's just say hypothetically because clearly they're gonna have a match at wrestle dream clearly it's just a match just to fucking help put over more hangman out of where does he go after this huh does he progress or does he further decrease down the fucking car messing around with other fucking jobbers let me just reiterate myself one more fucking time whenever fuse like this happened back in the days with guys like swerve strickland and hangman adam page at that level not the dumb fucking sadomasochist match that they had typically that meant that they were ascending upwards to go towards the world championship or something along the lines of that maybe against a legend and i'm and when i say legend i mean real legends not jeff jarrett okay not guys who put themselves into a position to be a nepotism baby in order to get themselves to a legendary position that they never fucking deserved to begin with actual fucking legends or actual fucking world championship status oh wait that's right it's aew and they booked like a fucking five-year-old on goddamn ritlin sorry not sorry continuing on with the fucking show can we get this over with we have another fucking full hour to go to and i swear to fucking god either this hour goes by in five minutes or there's a can of fucking fucking cyanide i know that's online i can purchase and i guarantee you i can get it under quick enough and i guarantee you i can do this to myself i can get this over with this could be quick this could be painless it's about as fucking painless as watching an episode of dynamite get this over with get this over with get this over with. uh you know there was a part of me oh man you know there was a part of me that said to myself Devonte, let's give this women's match a try let's just give this women's match a try maybe it might be good serena deeb is in the match after all let's just give it a try it can't be any worse than what the fuck you've seen on television and then you know they had a match and it bored the ever-loving fuck out of me you know if there was ever a fucking opportunity for tony khan to actually do one of his stupid fucking random gimmick matches maybe this should have been the match to do a gimmick with right this should have been the match you want to get creative let's get creative with the gimmick okay you got serena deeb on one side huh you got Britt baker on the other side let's get, get let's get creative with the fucking gimmicks okay last person to have an episode loses can we do that huh first person to fucking have a medical episode they lose the fucking match that way they lose you get a winner and we all win because the match is over a hell of a lot quicker than it fucking start no Devonte, that was messed up that was messed up Devonte. that was messed up okay you like serenity you hate Britt baker don't take Britt baker's shittiness and then try to spread it out to serena deeb <clears throat> okay so let me see if I understand this logic real quick let me see if I understand this logic real quick so what was the purpose of showing fucking Mariah May out there what was the purpose huh Huh, you couldn't have done anything, you know, something, I don't know, worthwhile with her? I forget that she was even the women's champion. But but let me see if I understand the logic, because clearly you're not going down this path, right? I'm super fucking confused as to what the fuck you're doing. Was she out there for just the sake of being out there? I thought she was going up against one of the stupid Japanese talents, right? Huh? Or is she not going up against them and she's going to go up against Britt Baker? Huh, is that what you're setting up right now? You, you know, the woman who lost against the mid-card champion, Mercedes Monet, who she herself should probably be the women's champion because she herself feels like more of a bigger deal than the actual women's champion who is nothing without Tony Storm. And then you bring out fucking Alicia Fox. What the fuck is this show, bruh? Oh, my God. Oh, God. I'm trying to... I swear to God, I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be positive. God damn, bro. This is torture. Oh, fuck, this is torture. I wish they had a shitty main event. I wish they had something with no name talents in the main event so I can have an excuse to turn this shit off. And and look, for, for, the, for the motherfuckers out there who are like, Devontae, why don't you ever give the women's matches a chance in AEW? You always skip the women's match. You never put a time step for the women's match. Are you a misogynist? Yes. 
Yes, I am. They turned me into a misogynist. Okay, I am a fucking full-blown sexist. I fucking hate women's wrestling at this point when I see shit like this, okay? You know what? Yes. Full-blown fucking misogynist. Okay, I am a fucking... I, 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 I am full... I am fucking Andrew Tate in this bitch, okay? Fuck. Fuck. Oh, bro, I can uh, I can actually feel my brain cells just just doing. Oh man, my brain cells are skibbity themselves. Left, left and right, left and right. I think I have like two left, maybe, maybe two and a half. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I got I got to push forward. I got to push forward. We got to get this over with. Devonte, don't start nothing. If it ain't gonna be nothing, don't start nothing. If you ain't gonna finish nothing, okay? Just keep going. The struggle is real. Oh, you sacrifice your time so you so no one else has to. That's your motto. Come on, keep swimming. Keep going. Keep going, okay? You gotta keep pushing forward, alright? You gotta keep pushing forward. You can't, you can't be like the people in North Carolina. You actually have to survive this. Let's keep going. Let's go. Come on, Devontae. Did they really just waste my fucking time twice? Not once. They did it twice. They did it twice. They waste my fucking time. So you had a squash match with Private Party and these two fucking heavy machinery jobbers, right? These Hank and Tank ripoffs. How are you a ripoff of a fucking developmental company brand fucking talent? Ah, oh. okay, okay. They won the match with a botch fucking. What did they call their finish? The 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 gin and juice. They botched the move. Of course, it's AEW. Botch AEW hand to hand, right? Ah, oh, bro. Afterwards, the, the the Jackson brothers came out and they they pretended as if they were gonna wrestle fucking private party, but they didn't. Clearly, they're building up to a private party. Oh shit, man! Uh, fuck, I got a migraine right now. Fuck. Oh fuck. Clearly, that's the path that they're gonna head down going towards fucking wrestle dream. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. I just want to get this over with. Coming up next, it, it's will. It's Okada and it's, and it's Danielson. I'm just happy about that. That's that's the best part of the show. The best part of the show is knowing that this match is next, meaning we're just about done. We're so close. And these motherfuckers, the Young Bucks, I hope that wasn't a shoot. They said we have a long overrun. That better not be a fucking shoot. Yo, man, hard stop. If there was ever such thing as a fucking hard stop, like WWE guess this show needs a fucking hard stop immediately. Immediately. If it wasn't for the fact that actual names, excuse me, an actual name was actually main event in the championship show, the match, the whatever, I wouldn't be here right now. I would have gave up on the show. I promise you, this would have been an early review. This would have been done. Zilch, zipper done lock it put it in your pocket fuck your mom's eye socket i, I don't i don't oh man i'm stressing out right now and then mvp he comes out he's having a promo backstage with uh, renee patty cake oh my god oh fuck one of the guys who i'm pretty sure was 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 part of the ohio stealing the geese and eating the ducks and shit he comes out and you know he's telling fucking mvp that he swerves when he drives and he drives when he swerves. I don't care. And then Shelton Benjamin, he's now all elites. Look, I fuck with Shelton Benjamin. I love Shelton Benjamin. It's 2024. I don't give a fuck about Shelton Benjamin. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? Okay, good. It wastes my time on both segments. This whole show is a complete waste of fucking time. It's nothing more than just, I, I swear. Tony said to, uh, he booked this show and he said, how do we piss off Devontae? We need to maximize pissing off Devontae. How do we take this shit to the peak? We need to piss off Devontae. And you know what? Congratulations, you fucking done did it. You done did it, done done did it. You fucking did it. You fucking pissed me off. You fucking made me frustrated. You gave me an aneurysm. You gave me a fucking migraine. You gave me a new medical diagnosis that hasn't even been created yet, but my body has now developed it. Prepare yourselves, folks. You're gonna get Devontae. You want an extreme headache? You're, it's called the Devontae. Okay, it's it's it, it's it's watching dynamite and having to endure your brain cells literally jumping out of a fucking 500-story building and collapsing on the floor and then them just following each brain cell jumping off like some fucking rodent jumping off a fucking cliff that i can't remember their names right now but it's a fun fact they they, they like the skibbity themselves and when they see someone skibbity themselves they follow after them because they're fucking retarded rodents i can't remember their names right now who cares groundhogs no i don't know fuck what am i talking about right now that's where i'm at right now can we just get this show over with okada Danielson, oh damn and i know there's gonna be a stupid fucking match oh my god okay let's just go let's just go let's just go these son of a bitches. These son of a bitches. Bro, see? This is the kind of shit right here, bro. This is the kind of shit that pisses me the fuck off, bro. Bro, let me get this fucking straight. Let me get this fucking straight. You son of bit. You son of a bitches. Tony Khan, you piece of shit. You garbage piece of shit, you. 
did you really did you really just do an overrun of 30 minutes you did let me see let me i gotta i gotta bro 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 fuck this company fuck this company you did an overrun of 30 minutes to have the match end in a random roll up. Ah, oh, bro! Ah, I'm losing my mind. Ah! 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 Fuck! Bro. You fucking! You wasted my fucking time. You wasted my fucking time. You did a damn near hour long match with an overrun of 30 fucking minutes to end it in a random fucking roll up just to get to a promo. Not a beat down, a fucking promo to promote Wheeler Yuta. And Brian Danielson in a fucking tag team match? You piece of fucking garbage, you motherfucker. I mean, you motherfucker, you motherfucker. You motherfucker, you motherfucker. He did, he. I hate this show. I hate AEW. I hate this company. I hate everything about their fans. I hate their wrestlers. I hate their staff. I hate that they're breathing the same air that I'm breathing. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. You wasted my time. I had to call in late going to work tonight. I work a late shift. These sons of a bitches wasted my fucking time. I have to lose 30 minutes of my fucking pay for you to fucking promote a motherfucking tag team match with Wheeler fucking Yuta. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my patience. I'm losing everything that I love. This company is single-handedly destroying everything that I love about professional wrestling. You have these motherfuckers go in there and do everything under the sun just for your stupid fucking roll-up finish to do this unbelievable this is one of the most unbelievable bookings i think i've ever seen in my life this company's insane they're, they're insane they're so insane it's contagious it's making it's making me insane i've i've never been this way before about a wrestling company they hate me they hate me i i'm i'm now convinced i'm losing my mind i'm convinced someone is looking at me through a telescope and i'm not and i can't see them i'm paranoid someone is looking at me and they're and they're phoning in to tony khan and they're saying De Devonte, he's acting like this take some notes down so we know how to book this match right here so we know what to fucking give because we know that he's going to fucking flip his goddamn lid and congratulations it worked it worked i'm flipping my lid right now i'm out of my mind you you You've made me insane. You've made me insane. I don't know how else to react to a company like this. I've never seen this before. I hate this. I hate everything about this. None of this made any sense. None of this made any sense. None of this made any fucking sense. N n what? What the fuck? What? What the fuck? What the fuck? I can't even tell you what they did in the match. They had like three commercial breaks. Oh my god. Oh my God, they had like, oh, oh my God. Don't watch this show. Don't watch this show. It will make you lose your fucking mind. It's, 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 it's turning me into a psychiatric patient. I'm, it's, uh, bro, don't watch this show. It will fucking, it will destroy you. This show will destroy you. What the fuck were they thinking? What the actual, it is 1036, folks. It is 10. 36 right now I'm almost emotional I'm almost emotional for the amount of time that they wasted they wasted my time this is not professional wrestling this is not how professional wrestling was supposed to be folks I'm telling you 
there was one point in time in professional wrestling was all about characters and it was all about story and it was all about progressing and forwarding cliffhangers giving you a reason to tune in the next week because of what the storyline was producing on television it was like a to be continue of a soap opera a picture dragon ball z and it gave you a to be continue of what was going on with the sequence of events that was happening at that moment that's how professional wrestling was back in the days every week was a reason to tune into the following week because you wanted to see the continuation of the rivalry of the feud that was going on at that moment right now it's not that they're literally progressing everything with the sake of wrestling just wrestling it's the wrestling it's the fucking wrestling all they do is fucking wrestle and they can't do anything else but fucking wrestle and you have people who are going to gaslight you and they're going to tell you on twitter they're going to tell you on social media they're going to tell you everywhere else the podcasters the people who enable this behavior the people who go around and they tell you things that are just just they're untrue they're 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 about as close to objectively untrue as you could possibly get as a matter of fact it's a it's a it's it's a statement damn near it's 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 I'm, i'm 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 fuck i'm fucked i'm fucking losing my mind i don't even know what to do anymore I don't. No one's going to listen to me. No one's going to hear me. I don't need people to specifically hear me. There are people who have voices like me. There are sane, rational people. I'm not sane and I'm not rational right now. But I am telling you, this is a sane and rational take. I'm telling you, there are people out there who think just like this. They understand. They grew up in the professional wrestling business no different than I did. Not in the business and itself. What am I talking about? See, this is what I'm saying right now. Professional wrestling was all about larger than life characters they they had they had a 45 minute match with a 30 minute no i'm sorry no they had a yeah no i think it was it was a 45 minute match with a 30 minute overrun for a roll-up finish to get to a promo segment to promote will or yuda in a tag team match I'm not watching next week. I'm not watching next week. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's next week on the same night as NXT. I'm not doing it. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to review NXT either. I need a... I, bruh. I'll, I'll, find, I'll find a replacement video. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to give them the, I'm not gonna give them that satisfaction. I'm not doing it. We're skipping next week's Dynamite. We're skipping next week's Dynamite. I'm not going to watch NXT either. I don't, I don't need to do this. I don't. I don't. Both shows were just ridiculous. One show was boring as fuck, and another show was just it's just fucking insane. One show is boring, and the other show it, it, it's it's not wrestling. This is not wrestling. This is not wrestling. I need Saturday. I need Bad Blood to deliver. I need SmackDown to deliver. Something has to deliver this week. This can't go on like this. This cannot go on like this. I need to go. I need to get the fuck up out of here. I need to go. I gotta go get dressed, and I need to go. I need to go to work. I'm already going in late as fuck because of the show and it's and it's overrun. I'm not watching Dynamite next week. I'm just warning you. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not giving them that satisfaction. You didn't give me a cliffhanger, then I don't have a reason to watch your show next week. I'm not doing it. My name is Devonte, and I'll be catching you guys later. Fuck this company. Just just fuck this company. Fuck this company. Fuck this company. Fuck this company.